All right, HBO, listen here. We are really awesome hackers, and we're going to leak all information about Game of Thrones. So you better watch out, because we're hackers, yo. Oh, yeah? Well, not if we leak it first. What's up guys, so I normally don't do Game of Thrones videos, but I was asked by many people for me to talk about this one, since on Twitter I said that I was able to see Season 7, Episode 6 a bit early, because for whatever reason, HBO in Spain accidentally leaked Episode 6. What happened was, they played Episode 5 in Spain, and the fans were like, oh this is really cool, that was great, I can't wait until next week, and then all of a sudden, they're like, what the? Are they replaying it? And then it was like, wait, no. This is the next episode? Holy shit, okay. So it was a bit of an accident on HBO's side. Can't blame them too for me. That kind of stuff happens. But this episode seems like the pinnacle of the entire season because it is awesome. Now, needless to say, if you guys haven't seen the episode yet and you don't want to have any spoilers, I highly recommend that you leave this video now and come back later after you've seen the episode. If you already have or just don't give a shit about spoilers, well, hey, come on in, welcome, welcome to my epic Westeros kingdom. So, now that you've all been warned, let's go ahead and get right into it, shall we? Now, for obvious reasons, I'm not going to be able to upload clips during this video because, you know, I'll probably get copyrighted up the ass, so I'm not going to do that. And I'm also not going to talk about every single thing that happened in the episode because this video will be like two hours long, so I'm not going to do that either. I'm only going to talk about the key points within the episode that I personally thought were most interesting, and what I also believe that people are going to be talking about after this episode comes out, which I do think once season seven is over, people are going to be talking talking about this episode in particular for a very long time. So the episode starts off with Jon Snow and company heading north of the wall to try to capture a White Walker. And I actually really like the opening of this episode just because it's calm. There's not a whole lot going on. They're really just traveling north of the wall looking for White Walkers and one of them could appear at any moment and you don't know when. But what I really like about this opening scene is the dialogue. We get a really lot of interesting dialogue. For example, we see Gendry get pissed off because he thought he was going to be killed or worse. And I love how the Hound just comes up behind him and is all like, You're moving your lips. And you're talking. I call that complaining. We also get a lot of really funny dialogue too. One of my most favorite conversations in the whole episode is actually when Tormund is talking to the Hound about Brienne. And it's funny how the Hound hates Brienne, but Tormund is basically in love with Brienne. And then Tormund just starts describing this woman, and then the Hound's like, Oh fuck, you're talking about Brienne. <laughs> And by far the funniest thing is when Tormund is just talking about what he's going to do to Brienne when he gets back south of the wall. And the Hound is just, just like, just totally disgusted. I love it. There's also this part where we see the two most noblemen talk to each other, which of course is Jon Snow and Jorah. And basically what happens is Jon Snow's basically like, hey, your father was basically a really good blacksmith with Valyrian steel, so why don't I give you Longclaw, my own sword, because you deserve it since, you know, your father will probably want it you to have it. And then uh, Jor basically says, no, this was a gift to you, you keep it. So I really like that. I like how Jor has really seen the achievements of what Jon Snow has accomplished so far and he's really starting to appreciate him. So I think he's just like, you know what, you've been doing all right for yourself so far with this sword. It's probably better in your hands. <laughs> and after that, we return to Winterfell, where in the last episode, Arya found a hidden note within Littlefinger's bed. And that note, which we all thought was going to be some type of cryptic, behind-the-scenes, evil plan Littlefinger had in mind, when in actuality, it's actually the letter that Sansa wrote way, way back earlier in the series when Joffrey was still king, where she basically says that Ned is a traitor and you need to come to King's Landing and bend the knee for my beloved Joffrey, which Sansa never really wanted to write the note. She is basically forced to, and then it was sent. And then when Arya finds this, she's of course all pissed off, saying like, you betrayed our family and blah, blah, blah. This whole episode really kind of made Arya to be kind of a bitch. I mean, practically this whole time in this episode, she's just nagging, nagging, nagging Sansa. And you're just like, okay. Like, think for two seconds, Arya. Do you really think Sansa wrote that note 
on purpose. You don't think she wasn't forced to, really? I mean, put two and two together. Considering how much of a psychopath Joffrey was, and considering the fact that Sansa was a lot younger during that time period, she even says in the episode, I was a lot younger and I was scared. And Arya's like, well, you shouldn't have just wrote it. You should have just died instead. It's like, really? Really? I mean, come on. And then Sansa basically places her foot down and says, you should be kneeling before me. If it weren't for me, we wouldn't be in Winterfell right now. It's because of me why we're all still alive. Jon Snow didn't win the bow. He actually lost. It's because of me and that I intervened in my far ahead planning that we were able to take it back. And then I was just like, yeah, whatever, and then leaves. It's just like, why are you such a bitch in this episode, Arya? Like, you haven't seen her in so long. Like, I know that you've undergone, like, this really hardcore training of Brazos and everything, but it's just like... Could you, could you calm down? Like, you, you don't have to impress Sansa, okay? I'm sure she's impressed with your sword skills you showed in the previous episode. You don't have to be a bitch to her, too. I mean, it, yeah. She even brings up, she's like, this isn't good. This is what Cersei wants from us. She wants us fighting, and she wants us to turn against each other. So I was like, yeah... I never thought I'd say this, but I'm actually on Sansa's side in this episode. I mean, throughout the series, Sansa's made some really, really stupid decisions. And Arya has been kind of showing herself as a badass, and I did start to like her, because she was able to take out Lord Frey, she's crossed people off her list that she wants to kill, so she's getting shit done. But then she comes along in this episode, and she's a bitch to her own family, it's like, come on, knock it out. Daenerys looks really pissed that all these people just left and they probably know they're going to die, but they left anyway and that kind of ticks her off and she's like, Tyrion, I'm really glad you're not a hero. Well, i am done heroic things in the past. And what's so funny is how Daenerys is just start naming people off that left the wall and then the last name she goes is, and Jon Snow. She didn't make that face, but you get my point. And even Tyrion elaborates, he's like, Oh, so you're worried about Jorah or Jon Snow? I see what you're doing. I can see your face. You want the D. It's okay, you can tell me. So later on in the episode, the Hound sees this mountain in the far distance which looks like an arrowhead. And he says, that's like the mountain that I saw in my vision in the fire from episode one. That's the same mountain. So they start heading that way, and then all of a sudden, this huge blizzard just comes in, and it's really hard to see. Out in the distance, you see, like, this really small figure. One of the uh, unknown people, which I think is a wildling, I'm not quite sure who that's with them. It's just a random guy. He's out there trying to investigate, seeing what it is. And when then, when it gets closer, it just gets bigger and bigger, and then one of them says... Holy crap, that's a bear. And then the unknown starts running back to everyone, but the polar bear starts chasing them, and as it gets closer, they're like, uh, do polar bears have blue eyes? And at this point, I was like, holy shit, it's an undead bear. Bears are one thing, but undead bears? Oh boy. So it ends up attacking Thoros and just rips the hell out of the sky. It actually reminded me a lot of that scene from The Revenant where the bear is just full-on whopping on this person. I mean, it's really hard to watch, and he's screaming in agony, so you can tell this guy's getting torn apart. And then Barrett gets his flame sword, slashes the bear, and then the bear is on fire, and it freaks the hound out because he's really scared of fire. It starts walking towards him, and the hound is actually... The hound looked like he was willing to die rather than trying to fight that thing off. When all of a sudden, Jorah comes in, tries stabbing it. Tormund comes in, tries stabbing it. Eventually, it goes down, but Thoris is fucked up. They take his coat off, and you can see all this really nasty blood scars all over his torso. You're like, ah, oh, fuck. I don't think that guy's gonna make it. And he's like, oh, I'll be fine. And then just part of your brain goes like, yeah, I have a bad feeling about this. Oh boy, it's not gonna get much better, is it? So later on in the episode, John and the rest of his crew actually do encounter a small group of White Walkers. So they think that because it's a small group, it's the best opportunity to attack, which makes sense. So they attack the group, and they're actually doing pretty well so far. However, Jon Snow actually starts fighting one of the leader White Walkers, kills it, and the rest of the Walkers just fall down in pieces, some of them. And they're just all stunned. They're like, what? What the hell just happened? Luckily, one of them's still alive, and then they manage to capture it, but the damn thing is screaming, you know, it's asking for help, and then you can just hear this huge horde swarming in in the background, and you're just like, oh boy, here they come. And then Jon Snow just looks at Gendry, and he's like, dude, get the fuck back to Eastwatch right now. Just get, go, go to Eastwatch, send a raven, tell Daenerys what happened, tell her we need help. 
And then he's like, I don't want to leave. He's like, you're faster than everybody else. And then uh, when he starts to run back, here, you'll run faster without this. Because I want to use it. Because I'm cool. You cunt. And by the way, the hound says the word cunt like 20 times in this episode. I love it. It's like a signature word or something. And at this point, from this time out onto the rest of the episode, is just by far one of my most favorite action scenes in Game of Thrones history. And this is why this makes one of my most favorite episodes ever. The horde just starts pouring in. They first start coming through this small crevice in the canyon. And all of a sudden, they just start pouring in through the top of the cliffs and just everywhere. You're like, holy crap. And it, the camera just reveals more and more than swarming in. And then Jon Snow and everyone else just starts running like, come on, come on, hurry. We got to get away from them. We got to get away from them. And they start running. And then they get to this frozen lake. And they start to step onto it and it starts cracking. Like, oh, crap. What do we do? And they just see them swarming in behind them. They're like, okay, fuck it. Let's just run out there and try to make it that small island in the middle, which they do manage to make it there. However, one of the unknowns gets killed. Again, we have no idea who he is. He's just a random guy helping them out, I guess. But he gets attacked by White Walkers, and then they tackle him. And because of this, they all accidentally destroy the ice. But thankfully, because of the way the Walkers have started soaring them, they basically surrounded them in this island. The whole lake starts to crack like this. So basically, there is a line of water in between John and the rest of his team and the White Walkers. So basically, they bought themselves some time. So Gendry manages to make it back to the wall. Sir Devil sees him, runs out, and he's like, are you okay? What's happening? Gendry says, send a raven, hurry. Then Davos is like, get me a master. But then we cut back to all the craziness. And unfortunately, Thoris succumbs to his wounds and dies. And I was like, yeah, I honestly, I didn't see that guy making it with how fucked up he was. But now that you think about it, because Thoris is gone, he's not going to be able to bring Barry back to life anymore. Unless for whatever reason, Melisandre decides to come around and brings him back to life. This is basically Beric's last life. They have a brief moment of grieving and then it cuts back to Winterfell where Brienne is basically telling Sansa, look, you just received this letter from King's Landing. Cersei is asking you to come visit her. It's basically like an invitation. And Sansa's like, I'm not stupid. I'm not going to King's Landing. Brienne, why don't you just go in my place? And she says, no, because I swore an oath to your mother that I would protect you and Arya. And she's... And this is the point where Sansa is kind of a bitch. She's like, I don't need you to protect me. Don't tell me what to do. I'm the queen of Winterfell, you bitch. Don't do what I say. You know, the snow and storm is going to make it a lot harder to travel. Just go. Just go. And then Brienne basically says, can't you at least let me allow Podrick to stay here to protect you? I don't need your protection. Just get out of here. And Brienne does make a really good point. She's like, I don't trust leaving you here alone with Littlefinger. At the very least, I really hope that she... At the very least, I at least hope that Podrick ends up staying behind in secret when no one knows. Either that, or when Littlefinger's going to try to take advantage of Sansa, Arya's going to be there to save the day. Hopefully that'll happen, we'll have to wait and see. So afterward, Daenerys does receive the letter from the East Watch saying that Jon and the rest of his team are in trouble. So Daenerys starts mounting her dragon, and then Tyrion says, This is a horrible idea. If you die, we're all fucked. So basically, if there's no Daenerys, there's... No army. We're basically lost. And she says, I have to go. And then she really puts salt on Tyrion's wounds and says, I listened to you the last time I did nothing. And it did not go well. It's like, oh, man. Oh, that's messed up. So Daenerys takes off, but instead of just taking Dragon, she takes all three of her dragons and they just start flying towards the wall. But you don't know how long it's going to take for them to get there. It cuts back to Jon and the rest of his team. And this is also one of my most favorite parts, or actually one of the most funniest parts in the entire season. The Hound picks up a rock and just throws it like a baseball towards one of the White Walkers that's just standing out there outside of the lake. And it ends up hitting one of them in the face, and the White Walker is just kind of like... I love the Hound's reaction where he's just like, you cunt. <laughs> but then the Hound throws another rock, and uh, it actually slides across the ground this time. It doesn't break the ice. And one of the White Walkers notices this and starts slowly walking. It takes a few steps forward, and the ice isn't cracking. More White Walkers know this, and they're like, oh, the ice isn't breaking. Charge! And then you just see all them swarm in, and you're like, fuck. <laughs> Which is actually exactly what the Hound said. I would have said the exact same thing if I was in his shoes. Just... Fuck. <laughs> 
So the horde of White Walkers just starts swarming in. It's overwhelming them. It is not looking good. With the capture of White Walker, one of them almost gets away with it, but Jon Snow at the last minute is able to save it, but he ends up getting hurt in the process. I mean, Tormund almost dies, but the Hound saves them, which is also a really cool moment. Just tons of crazy shit is happening, and you're like, how are these guys going to get out of this? I mean, the nurse has got to be so far away. And all of a sudden, pfft, dragon flies over Jon Snow, breathing fire, and the dragons are just raining hell down all of these White Walkers, and I fucking loved it. So Daenerys lands with one of the dragons, and everybody is trying to get on top of the dragon, and then Jon Snow is also fighting off the White Walkers to buy them time to escape. However, while doing so, the Night King actually gets an ice spear and throws it at Viserion, and it hits him. He falls to the frozen lake, it shatters, and Viserion is dead. He falls down into the lake, and Daenerys is in shock, as anybody who is a mother would be. The rest of the team is just in shock as well, like, holy fuck. We just witnessed a dragon getting killed. This is some serious shit. So it's a very sad moment, and Jon Snow still tries to run towards the dragon, but he can't because White Walkers tackle him. They end up pushing him through the ice, and then he gets up being shot underwater. It doesn't look good. The Night King gets another ice spear and is about to throw it at them. And in a panic, Daenerys takes off. The Night King throws the ice spear. It misses, but they barely manage to escape. However, Jon Snow manages to pull himself out of the ice, but he's really badly injured, so he's probably not going to make it too far. He sees all the White White Walkers start to just swarm towards him. He gets a sword out. You're like, how the hell is he going to get out of this? When all of a sudden, this hooded figure on a horse comes in and has this malice and just starts swinging it. And it's a flaming malice. And he just starts taking White Walkers out. You're like, oh, no way. Is it him? Is it him? And sure enough, the person takes off their hood. Benjen. So Benjen puts Jon Snow onto his horse, tells him to leave so they don't have much time. It's very, very quick. Which makes it really sad, because this is the last time Jon Snow is ever going to see his uncle, and he hasn't seen him in years. So the fact that this reunion is going to be the last one, it's pretty emotional. So Jon Snow is running away on the horse, he looks back and he sees Benjen just getting overwhelmed by all these White Walkers, and they just completely demolish him, and it's a really sad moment, and I was like, oh no, Benjen's not going to live through that. Back at Eastwatch, the Hound and Tormund managed to put the captured White Walker onto a boat and they start to take it to King's Landing. They gotta get there as soon as possible before it starts to decompose. And back on the wall, Daenerys notices a small figure come towards the wall. And of course, it's Jon Snow who is barely alive. They cut back to the boat where Jon Snow is badly injured and I really like this attention to detail where Sir Davos is trying to rip the coat off of Jon Snow, but it's really hard to because it is frozen. I mean, now that he's ripping it apart, you can just hear all the crunching noises and the shattering of the ice. It's like, man, he must have been freezing. How the hell did he live through that? But anyway, Daenerys sees Jon Snow with his shirt off, and then she's like, holy crap, he has a scar right here over his heart. Just like earlier in the season, when Sir Davos says that Jon Snow took a knife in the heart for his people, it wasn't a figure of speech. He was being literally serious. Daenerys and Jon Snow have a heartwarming conversation where basically you're watching this scene play out and you're just like, come on, just bang already. We're, we know what's going to happen, just do it. But it's a really heartwarming moment and I really liked it. They had a lot of good dialogue. Back in Winterfell, we get to see Arya be kind of a bitch to Sansa again, where Sansa finds all of the faces that Arya has had for herself. When Sansa finds these, she's questioning Arya what they are. And Arya is just giving her like this weird philosophical speech, like, hey, let's play a game. Sansa's like, I don't want to play a game. It's like, Arya, what the fuck are you doing? Are you trying to be the, like this evil villain? Like, that's Littlefinger's job. Like, come on. She even takes a dagger and starts to walk towards Sansa with it. And I'm like, there's no way she's going to kill her. Like, there's no way. And then she flips the knife around and gives it to her. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, that happened. <laughs> and then the end of the episode, which is probably going to be the most shocking thing that anybody is going to see and that they're going to be talking about as well, well after this episode comes out, is the Night King commands all of his White Walkers to put chains below the lake and they start pulling out Viserion. The Night King walks up to it, he touches it, and then after a brief moment, Viserion's eyes open and they're blue. And that tells you, oh, fuck. Undead Ice Dragon. Ice Dragon Theory confirmed. Oh boy. It's sad, but I think it's epic at the same time. Because if you look at it this way, we're soon going to see a fire dragon fight an ice dragon. I mean, that's just fucking sick. 
I mean, some people are going to be really sad. They're like, I don't think he should have come back undead at all. Why don't you just have him rest in peace? I don't know. Maybe I'm just a sick bastard and I like seeing things come back to life and try to kill people. Who knows? <laughs> Overall, though, I thought it was a really well done episode. I thought the beginning of it was very slow paced. It was very calm. And then halfway through the episode, up until about the very end, it's just constant, nonstop, thrill rides. So Daenerys' army has been starting to be taken out and on top of that one of her dragons is killed and is going to be turned against her so the odds are not looking too good for Daenerys. I feel like the showrunners kind of had to do that because I feel like if Daenerys has three dragons she it will take a while but she could probably take out the whole army of White Walkers. Again it would take a while but I think she'd probably take them out. So I feel like that because they're bringing one of them back to life it sort of sets the playing field even that way everyone has sort of a fighting chance that way you really can't predict who's gonna win because before Viserion died it was kind of like well Daenerys has three dragons and if she's able to get the support of everyone in Westeros I don't really see how the White Walkers have a chance unless there's like hundreds of thousands of them like an overwhelming number of them but now that the Night King has an undead ice dragon well the odds aren't looking too good in fact they're pretty even and I'd say the Night King is slowly slowly getting uh, his odds a lot better. So it's not looking too good, but hey, that's all the more reason for you to get excited and really, really wanting to know what happens next. But I thought this episode was really cool. I love to hear what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below what you think is gonna happen in the season finale leading up to season eight. I love hearing speculations and the theories about what may or may not happen. But if you enjoyed this video, guys, be sure to give it a like. And if I get a lot of people that want me to make more of these, I'll be more than happy to do so. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and pawn your coats because winter is coming. It's not going to be pretty. Peace.